Hi, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us once again on this show, The Pyramid Show, here live on Joy News Television. This program is brought to you by the kind sponsorship of Republic Bank and Zypes Waterproofing. Now, in modern times, with an increase with construction activity in Ghana, particularly with edifice of houses and apartments, the number of fire outbreaks reported is believed to be on the increase. Fire occurs in the building when there is a breach of the National Building Code and building norms all through accidents. This can account for loss of life and property. The goal of architects or engineers through building design is to make sure, among all other things, the National Building Code is adhered to the letter. This, when done, will ensure safety of building occupants even in the event of fire outbreaks. Buildings are of different types, namely residential, institutional, industrial, and warehouses, ETC. In all these types of buildings, fire safety and protection cuts across. Fire alarm, fire sprinklers are some of the measures put in place to fight fire when there is an outbreak. So today, we'll be focusing on the fire safety requirement that you need in your home. But before we begin the discussion, it's very important if you're an architect, an engineer, or probably a project manager, even a mason, going forward, I recommend Zypress Waterproofing Admixture to you. Now with Zypress Waterproofing Admixture, once you add it to your concrete, be it your mortar, even with the laying of your blocks, you protect your building against the penetration of water. We all do see the effect that this water creates on our building with rising down sometimes with serious leakages coming through the building. Your solution is a Zypress waterproofing concrete product. So call us on this number that is 0208-1103-28. 0208-1103-28. And now for your perfect haven right here in Accra, you wouldn't have to look further than the Lakeside Community 8. This community is actually gated. It has a 24-7 security surveillance. Above all, you are short of three recreational parks where you get to spend time with your family and wouldn't have to go to the outskirts of a crowd to have that feeling of the greens and even boating on the water. We also have fiber internet uh, connectivity available. So call us for your two, three, four bedroom houses within this thriving community and be part of this society. So call us on this number 050-127-9284. 050-127-9284. But before we take a short break, my question for you is this. I would want to know, what has been your experience with um, your house when you don't have these fire equipment in your house? And also tell me, uh, have you ever had a visit from the Ghana National Service? Have they ever come to your house to inspect your building, whether you've conformed to the fire you know, safety requirements that you are supposed to be having in your home. So send me your response on 0500-180-697. 0500-180-697. We take a break. The show returns shortly. Thank you for staying with us. Once again, this is the Pyramid Show, your number one teleconstruction guy. So my name is Emmanuel Owusuansa. Now, a look at our topic today. We are talking about fire safety requirements that you need in your home. And with me in studio for this uh, insightful discussion, I have two venerable officers coming from the Ghana National Fire Service. We have that is a... Uh, uh, Divisional Officer Grade 1. His name is Desmond Aka. He's currently the Deputy Public Relations Officer. And Divisional Officer Grade 3, Michael Ato Kosa. He's currently the Deputy Director, Fire Safety. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us on this discussion. Now, for uh, to start with, I would want to ask the importance of you know, fire safety in our home. Why is it important in the first place? I'll start with you for having us. Uh, but first of all, let me admit that you've exchanged our ranks and <laughs> oh, okay. that, is, that is punishable by... <laughs> oh, sorry about that. I'm rather DO3 Akadesmond. Oh, okay. Sorry. And my boss here is uh, DO1. DO1. Sure. Okay. Thank you for the correction. Yes. Um, the fire service has come of age. I mean, we have been in existence since 1963 and we have been educating the general populace on fire safety. Fire safety is important in our current dispensation because without it, a lot of businesses would uh, 
will go down the drain, and that will not go well for our nation. And fire safety is simply the practices or measures put in place to minimize the impact of fires in a mm. structure mm. or in a building. So from right from the, the planning stage, through the design stage, through the construction stage, safety is very paramount and for which we must ensure that it is done right and is done well. Okay. So that we don't experience fires. But it is also important to also um, let the public also know that it can never happen that we'll have a society where fires will not occur. That is why we require that developers put in adequate safety measures in their structures so that even if the fires uh, occur, the impact will be minimized and then lives and property will be saved. Now, you said developers need to put in adequate you know, uh, structures during the construction stage. I would want to understand this. When does it start? Is it even with the designing of the drawing or is when you are about beginning the construction itself? Yes, um, it, it begins right from the word go. Once you have the idea to put up a structure, you need to be able to go to the appropriate quarters to submit an application or to submit your drawings. So let's say when you want to put up a building in Ghana, the first place or the first point of call is the assemblies where you have to submit your drawings for them to give you a building permit. So whilst it goes through that stage, you are also required to also come with, um, to fire service with your drawings where we also do our review. By our review, we are supposed to know the exposures um, of where you are going to put up that particular structure. As to whether that structure um, can, the soil that is available, where you are going to put your structure, um, is in the capacity to even uh, contain the load, depending on the size of um, building that you're going to put up there. So there is the need for soil testing and all the other considerations to be done. I mean, we don't work in isolation. We work in tandem with other um, stakeholders. So they also do their bit. So once those things are done and you submit your drawings to us, it is our responsibility to check the uh, exit with the direction of opening of the doors and what have you, so that in case there is fire, there will be easy, uh, there, there, there will be, um, how do you call it, um, easy way for people to escape. So technically, we give advice on building plans and structural layouts to facilitate easy escape when there is fire. It, 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 easy escape. Sure. It, it's not about the installation of maybe probably detectors or smoke detectors, uh, let's say sprinklers. With that, you don't uh, advise on that, Mr. Corsa. No, thank you very much. Um, um, let me situate this conversation on the, the Section 4 of our Act 537. Mm -hmm. I always talk about it and say that um, we discuss safety without and safety within. He talked about uh, providing technical advice of, or to buildings or for building plan in respect of machinery and uh, structural layout. Then the basic idea is that well, before you would situate or put up the building, you, you made mention of exposures, all right? Know whether you are safe, all right? We have uh, an institution mandated by law to manage the land take, all right? Manage the land take, and uh, by the scheme of plan, they, are, they will tell you that um, lands are categorized, either industrial area, mixed zone, or residential zone, all right? So you must understand this before you go into that, so that you don't find yourself putting a residential facility in an industrial zone. Okay. That could be suicidal, all right? So that is basic safety. And he talked about structural layout. We have seen time and again where communities are choked. You call incident responders and they are unable to get accessibility. And as a result, uh, we, we experience a multiplicity of casualties and deaths. That is also a problem. And you see, every space is not good for, for, for building. In as much as it's good for building, it is also important to know that we must leave spaces for as safe havens, we must leave spaces for incident responders to use for maneuvering in an event of fire outbreak. All these things contribute to the safety of the occupancy 
of, uh, of people, all right? Mm -hmm. So that is the basic safety. Uh, that is why he talked about, uh, he talked about uh, layout and all that. So without, safety without will require that you, 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 you create an, an environment where, which is very suitable and uh, uh, safe for the occupants, people around the place to live in place. Going forward, um, you, when you talk about safety within, then you are talking about the protocols that is prescribed in the LI, that is fire precaution regulation in, uh, that was passed in 2003 or 2003. That talks about warning devices, fire equipment, okay. and exit signs. And uh, before you are able to prescribe or recommend this uh, uh, equipment to be installed on a facility, then you must consider the prevailing hazards. What are hazards? Hazards are anything that has the potency of causing harm, all right? And the risk are the things that can cause harm, all right? So knowing your hazards, then you must be able to recommend the, the right equipment that will commensurate with the prevailing hazards. Uh, you don't have to over-recommend or under-recommend. Make sure they are, they, they are apart so that the, the, the people in there, when something happens, either the alarm will trigger or the people would pick the extinguisher to, to, to use it in fighting it or they would escape, all right? But th that notwithstanding, I always say that um, in, in, in as much as we recommend that protocols are put for people to, to help people, aid them out and all that, it's important that safety becomes an inhibition, a lifestyle, a lifestyle, so that uh, when, 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 when you are, you are, that is why you say that safety is, is a piece of practices, all right, with an intention to reduce uh, destruction caused by fire. So that thing must be a lifestyle so that when, when uh, you, are, you, are, you are there, you don't, you don't commit that basic violations. For example, in the houses, the m major hazards that we, we experience is short circuiting, all right? Overloading and all that. Most of the, the, the outbreaks that occur in the houses are as a result of electrical fires. All are human induced. Mm -hmm. So it's important that in as much as we talk about safety, having protocols, alarm system, extinguishers, and, uh, and the exit, all right? It's important that we check our lifestyle. Okay, so if you just join us, this is the Premi Show here live on Join News Television. Now, my question to you, I would want you to be very honest, and I need your response to this. I would want you to be honest, like I said before. Uh, do you have fire warning or equipments within your home? Do you have them installed or probably even at the workplace? Uh, do you have them installed? If not, uh, I would want to know why and also tell me uh, why things are looking the way they are looking. So send me a WhatsApp or send me an SMS via this number 0500-180-697. And also, if you find yourself within a public facility, be it a warehouse, be it an office space, have you ever seen uh, uh, these officers from the Ghana National Fire Service pay a visit to conduct an inspection. We would want to know the truth on the ground. Do the officers come around to do these inspections? Let me know if they've ever visit, visited you. If not too, let me also know via the same number, 0500-180-697. Now, coming on to you, uh, this one, I, I would want to understand this. You mentioned proper layout. You look at the safety first. Now, considering safety, uh, what has safety got to do? Is it with the installation of the warning signs or you are looking at the number of space, the size of ventilation, uh, the exits that are supposed to be within the building? Yes, uh, what we talk about layout is um, the alleys, the escape routes that will facilitate um, easy escape when there is a fire emergency. So if you submit your drawings, what we look at is the width of your escape route, if it, is, if it satisfies um, regulations. If it doesn't, we will ask you to do um, likewise. And what we have realized is that many communities even develop ahead of, um, let's say, regulatory bodies. Before we go to the scene to ensure that the writing is done, the necessary permitting, the paperwork are done, the community, uh, community is even up and running. And most of the times, it becomes very difficult to um, go and pull structures down because of the human face that we, we, we work with. And so therefore, um, it has happened that 
when there have been where there has been some fire outbreaks where we have been called to tax and we are fi we find it very difficult to get access to these places all because of these um, um, layout challenges mm -hmm. so we would want the uh, various stakeholders such as the planners to also be up and doing in such a way that when we are demarcating um, the lands and then the layout for other purposes we would ensure that the necessary um, 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 exits and the necessary routes, the roads and what have you, mm -hmm. are put in place so as to curtail these challenges. But uh, notwithstanding, even in our own homes, um, when you submit your drawings, we are expected to go through and then ensure that the width, like I said already, is, is in tandem with our regulation. Oh, on the minimum, the width is supposed to be? It depends on the use of, okay. of, of the structure and then the occupancy. How many people are going to be there and all that, their age, and then their sex and all that, the distribution of the demographics, we have to look at all those considerations to be able to determine the appreciable weight. If it is going to be for a commercial place, let's say a market, an open market, then it means that the weight has to be more than um, what we normally admit for residential okay. um, premises. And therefore, we ensure that those things are, are, are done. But you would realize even for open market, we will do all those considerations, but you, you will go there for your inspection mm -hmm. and you realize that most of the alleys have been blocked by people's words and what have you. And we have had cause to enforce the laws and to get people out of it, the places. And most of the times when you even go to do your enforcement, by the time you, you go, they are back to, to the place. So structural layout is very important to us. When you go to the factories, those layouts are really maintained. Mm. And we have less issues with the factories than our domestic and even our commercial centers. What about the office spaces? Yes, we, have, um, we don't have much issues with the office space because those places, the, the uh, stringent safety measures and regulations are well kept there. And therefore, we have minimized or we have less amount of fires occurring in such places. But when you come to our domestic and our commercial enclaves, mm -hmm. we have a lot of fires due to non-compliance with these layouts that we expect people to um, go accordingly. So when you come to our homes, per our statistics, a lot of fire damages occur in our homes. Um, year in, year out, we record not less than 40% of fire damages in our residential um, premises alone, We're mostly followed by these commercial um, entities. It is where we have um, um, ecological imbalance that we have a lot of bushfires and all that, that come into. But on the whole, we have a lot of these um, structural fires in our residential properties. What is the issue? The issue is that people have um, developed a pension of blocking their exit ways or their escape route with other ways, such that when there is fire, it becomes very difficult for them to escape and escape easily. Other times, too, people are considering um, their security at the expense of their safety. You can be secured but not safe. That is why we are there and we have been educating people to um, come to the consciousness that safety is paramount. And therefore, at any given time, we are to ensure that all our escape routes within our jurisdiction, whether in our domestic um, space or our commercial enclaves, they are made easily accessible and all that. You will go to a community, we have demarcated places for roads and what have you, and people are building in the roads. People are building in the lanes. What do you expect the fire? engine which is quite robust to have access to even extinguish these fires bear in mind we are saying that safety they are just measures or practices mm -hmm. to minimize the impact so if impediments are put in the way of the fire officers how can they even work the same thing applies to um, 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 the layout sometimes we have had courses where um, um, certain roads and certain routes are blocked without our notice when it happens like that, it affects our response time. When the response time of the fire emergency responders are also affected, I mean, a lot of lives are put at risk mm. and property is also uh, uh, destroyed in, in that case. So there used to be that collaboration between us and the various MMDs, that is the Metropolitan Municipal and District Assemblies in that light. But of late, for about, for the past five years or so, We've not had that collaboration, and therefore these roads are blocked for social events without even informing fire service. Mm -hmm. And I think it is very bad. Once we are informed that a particular road, a particular route, 
a particular, um, let's say, alley is going to be used for a particular purpose. It, it forms part of our pre-planning in such a way that we're able to put our house in order and then devise alternate routes to be able to get to incident scenes as quickly as possible. Quite recently, let's say for, for the past 10 years or so, we were doing a response time of about 12 minutes. But quite recently, we are doing an average of about um, eight minutes, which is quite commendable. We've had reports where we have done less than five minutes. And we want to be able to reduce our response time to the barest minimum or to the international standards of maximum five minutes. So if our layouts are blocked, if we have issues with assessing um, properties which are on fire, then it makes our work very, very difficult. Okay, now with what DO3 uh, Desmond just said, he was saying that uh, in light of what we are saying, that residential you know, homes are mostly affected by fire outbreaks the more. My simple question is this, why therefore don't we do you know, periodic inspections to these properties to ascertain that they are really in line with what uh, your layouts are or probably the construction uh, fire safety measures should be? To start with, uh, I would say that um, um, at the assembly level, there is a committee by name, Strategy Planning Committee. Uh, we are having a representative there. And uh, like you stated earlier, before you have an intention to build, mm -hmm. you designed, submit the drawings to the fire service, you send one copy to the assembly. Haven't done, uh, gone taking the, the uh, drawings through a review, and uh, um, fire engineering drawings are, are, are done, then uh, you submit, you take it back to the assembly, a representative there would inspect and find out, go through it, recheck, and find out that the, all those protocols are, are incorporated mm -hmm. into, the, uh, into the drawings. And uh, there is a unit within the assembly that is called the uh, um, building inspectorate unit. And before you start, the building, they went to go to the site to inspect, which we have a representative there to ensure that the building is not put on the access route so that uh, it does not prevent the fire, um, fire engines from uh, accessing mm -hmm. uh, um, the, the route to, to an emergency. And uh, I must say that all these things work uh, in tandem. I always say that whatever we do as an institution or regulators, it's, it's not uh, mutually um, uh, exclusive. We are complementing each other okay. to ensure that um, uh, proper things are done. Now, let me say that we have a proposed building and we have an existing building. Both, before you start, there's what we call pre-inspection. Um, we go to the site to inspect, to find out the exposures, whether the building, it's, it's, it's okay to go, whether there, there is a potential hazard, what if there is, what are the recommendations? And uh, we do re-inspections to find out after the prescriptions whether you have in, we are incorporating our recommendations put in the drawings into the building. Then when you are done, we do um, uh, uh, final inspection. All these processes, it means that we, Ghana National Pfizer, by our mandate, we have given you a permit, all right? A, a permit, fire permit. A fire permit, all right, which would uh, allow you to go through this process. And uh, during that process, periodic, periodic inspections are conducted to make sure that you are doing the right things, all right? Then after you are done, we do the final inspection, then the permit is converted to certificate. So inspections are done regularly. Apart from that, there's a, a, a unit in our um, um, organization that is, is called uh, domestic fire inspectors mm -hmm. or domestic fire educators who go around uh, in the premises, domestic homes or houses to inspect, all right, the hazard, advise um, uh, the tenants and all that. Uh, most of the things we find is that um, the, the landlords normally don't, well, after they have rented out, don't make provision for kitchens and all that. So you find most of the cylinders in their rooms and all that. When we see that or we discover that we advise them to bring the cylinders outside, in most cases, we find out that the, the meters where they is being, is being placed is so down or close to uh, access to the children and all that, to the reach of the children and all that, which is quite dangerous. So we are, we are, we are collaborating with the other agencies. It's, it's a, a multi-sectorial approach to ensure that all these things are done. 
to ensure. So we visit the homes, we visit the industries to ensure that fire protocols are adhered to. Now, uh, you made mention of fire permit, fire certificate. Um, with my experience, I have not seen quite you know, domestic homes having a uh, fire certificate. I think with the offices and the warehouses, uh, most of the times we would appreciate that. But with the domestic homes, I have a challenge with that. DO3. Yes, uh, there's a law, um, LI 2249. I think it came into effect um, in 2016. And we have been educating the masses to be compliant when it comes to securing home fire certification. Um, the good news is that if you go to certain jurisdiction, most assemblies have embraced the concept. So anybody who comes to the assembly to submit his or her drawings or building plans for a building permit, they are directed to see the um, representative of the chief fire officer in that jurisdiction to also help them to acquire the home fire certificate. So as I speak with you, a lot of houses in Ghana have gotten this home fire certificate and by which they are required to put in place um, adequate firefighting means, um, that is the portable fire extinguishers and what have you, and then also um, smoke um, alarm systems, including smoke detectors and what have you. So because we've realized that the challenge that we have as a, as a service is to is having more fires in our domestic enclaves. And therefore, once they go through the fire, home fire certification processes and their, their homes are fitted with these um, fire protection um, equipment, um, and we know that these fire, some of these fires occur um, most often than not in the midnight or at midnight where people are asleep, the smoke detectors would um, create the needed alarm system to al alert them of a fire so as to facilitate their escape. Even now, we have partnered with certain um, institutions to incorporate what we call collapsible escape um, in their um, people's um, homes, especially when it comes to escaping from fires. We've realized that um, um, about two or three years coming, um, a lot of people have died through fires um, in their homes. Why? Because they, they go in for these hardcore burglar proofing and all that. So we have moved a step further and we are incorporating these um, collapsible, easy to maneuver, um, 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 escape routes, um, especially with, with respect to windows and even exits and even doors. People are now using fire-rated doors and fire-rated um, um, paints for their buildings and all that. I mean, safety is very broad and it's quite expensive. So with time, I know that a lot of people will, catch, will be caught up and then would apply for these fire um, certificate, home fire certificates. Now, if you're having challenges with your building, be it rising down leakages or even with cracks, the ultimate solution is Zypers waterproofing product. With Zypers waterproofing product, is going to protect your building against the adverse effect of water and even the possible attack of salt. We take a break. The show returns shortly. Thank you for staying with us. Up next is Audrey Dushi Kafri with the interactive segment. Thank you, Manuel. So it's been a great discussion going on. I have learned a lot. That is why I'm asking that you are careful. Make sure all your switches are turned off before you leave your homes. I ask this, what do you think are some possible causes of fire in your home? Send me your messages on WhatsApp or via SMS. Number 0500180697. So our first comments for the day is coming from Asamwa from Gomwa. Are they still building fire hydrants in new and developing communities? The next, Michael Ofori from Ebri. The recent charges for fire certification for story building these days are choking. What are the standard costs for fire certification in this country? Hello, I'm Prince George from Lashibi MF Estate. I live in an apartment complex with 72 rooms. Unfortunately, I realize our apartment doesn't have any fire safety installation. I have had cause to voice this concern during a tenant landlord meeting, but it's been three months now. Nothing has been done about it. Kwame Bless Kodo from Wasada DSO. Fire education is good. It will help our viewers. Please ask the officers. Yesterday there was a fire outbreak at Wasada DSO. We want we went to their office in Wasa Ekopong. They just told us their break has spoiled. 
the community used manpower to off the fire. It took us more than two hours, spoiling almost five houses and their properties. Not manpower then. The whole town transformer would have caught fire. Good afternoon. Please, how true is it that fire tenders arrive at fire outbreaks empty? That's from Koku Zumanu at Olebu Ablekuma. What role has Ghana National Fire Service has in the construction of high occupancy buses? Most have just one exit at its frontage, making it virtually impossible for passengers to exit the bus in case of fire outbreaks. The accidents that occasion at Kintampo are about, where a passenger narrated how the fire emerged from the frontage, trapping all passengers therein. About three persons perished in the said fire. That's from Osei Kwam SK from Efidiasi Asante. Good afternoon, Esquire. Osei Kwam Esquire from Efidiasi Asante. Good afternoon. Please, what is short circuit? How does it cause fire at home? Coming in from SKN from Cape Coast. Please, I would like to know how much it would cost to obtain fire permit for a four-story building. And then the person sent a voice note. Good afternoon. I'm Bremer. I'm Brema. In fact, we are enjoying the program, but I want to know who's, who's supposed to sign fire permits. Please, are authorities not set in place to check out the places where people build? Please, may I know if there... There are charges involved with a series of inspection, permits, and the certificate you would finally issue. Next, from John Efriye Manase from Ajumako. Aj 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 Building materials should also be considered easily combustible materials. Sorry. Building materials should also be considered. Easily combustible materials used should be minimized whilst making exit points easier to use by the occupants. Please, this program should be on every Sunday. Thank you. It is always on every Sunday. Good afternoon. I'm SKN from Cape Coast. Please, what is the short circuit and how does it cause fire at home? The fire service is supposed to be a member of the technical subcommittee at the MMDs, where, inspect, where inspections and that's recommendation for the spatial planning committee to give final approval of the permits as prescribed by the land use and spatial planning. So that's coming from Musa from Fiscal Planning Office, Nema. Hello, please. Whenever the cooker is not in use, do we need to shut off the gas supply at the valve or cylinder? So that will be all for the interactive segment. But before I go, I have a question for Emmanuel. You have a question for me, Audrey? Yes, I do. Okay, go You look on. good in your outfits. Oh, Thank you very way. much. So Emmanuel, with all that we've heard, with all that has been said, what is the condition at your house? Is it safe for some of us to visit? You mean my house where yes. I stay? Yes. I'm good. I have all the fire safety warnings and, uh, you know, uh, I'm a good citizen. What do you have? Is your fire extinguisher expired or is it good to be used? Uh, Should there be an outbreak? Audrey, I'm seeing this as a witch hand. I, I don't know why you're asking me these questions today, but I can tell you I have all the fire safety equipment in the house. And I'll okay, say thank sure. you very much. Thank you very much, Audrey. So um, coming back to uh, our messages, I would want us to respond to a few of the messages before we move on with our discussion. Yes, um, I will start by answering the question that has to do with um, the permit, uh, charges on the permit certification, mm -hmm. inspections, and all that. Uh, it is important to note that um, when drawings are submitted, review is done. And uh, review by review, we are looking at the protocols, the design, and uh, the recommendations made. And uh, the charges are, are based on the floor <laughs> space, and uh, it is charged based on the meter square. So the bigger the floor space, the bigger amount you pay, all right? Okay. But then, if a permit is, um, uh, is, is requested, a proponent was supposed to uh, um, invite the service for an inspection. So an inspector is sent there. Um, uh, that inspector would inspect, and uh, it's all incorporated, as I have stated, in the floor space or floor area of the dimensions. Okay, any other ones? I think DO3. Yes, um, short circuit is somebody asks of um, the meaning or how does short circuiting cause fire? It's simply the um, when two 
low resistance connection between two conductors supplying electrical power come together mm. and this generates excessive heat in the conducting medium and that um, cause the insulation to uh, break down and lead to a fire outbreak. And so therefore we would want to appeal to the public to ensure that they get certified electrical contractors or engineers to do their installations for them using quality cables. Somebody also asked that uh, was sad that there, so there, there was a brick failure on the fire appliance and therefore they couldn't respond to a fire situation. Yes. Um, what it means is that our fire engines are now over, some are over 12 years, some are also over 15 years, mm -hmm. and they are susceptible to these uh, mechanical failures. So we would employ or uh, 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 implore on the various stakeholders within the district assembly or within the areas of operations of the fire stations to also help in whatever way to get these um, uh, faulty um, appliances back to, in as much as we also try as a service to fix them. Um, somebody also asks about um, what is the role of fire service in high occupancy uh, buses. Some of these buses normally have one um, entry and exit point. Um, actually, our, because of our intervention, uh, these new buses, if we have been um, observant um, of late, these buses that are being used on our roads, the new ones, they have two um, exits, you can, one at the back and one, at the, one in the front, and because of our intervention. And then also, those that have just a single exit, periodically we engage the driver unions and then take them through emergency escape drills. We have um, glass or breaking tools. Mm. We have some um, um, equipment okay. whereby in, in such emergencies, we can easily manage some of the glass or windows and then escape. So we have been taking the, okay. um, some of the people. I, I think uh, you hold on. So course, uh, you add on it. I think the buses in respect of the occupancy and the yeah. exit. Um, uh, um, about two weeks ago, we had a meeting. The chief officer in the presence of um, Julius Kono um, sent the director of safety and his delegation to meet the chief executive of DBLA. And uh, we had a meeting with them in respect of that. And uh, it goes beyond the exit. We are also thinking that the, as a requirement, they might have extinguishers on the, on the vehicle. And uh, the issue regarding the DBLA also selling um, fire extinguishers to drivers uh, was also looked at. Because it is not to just buy it and put mm -hmm. it into it. It must be serviced annually. And uh, we have sat down to come up with modalities to ensure that those extinguishers are tagged, okay. all right, are certified with a tag by the Technical Advisory Committee of the Ghana National Fire Service being regulated by the safety to ensure that extinguishers in vehicles are very active and uh, okay. drivers know how to use them. Now, I would, want us to, I would want you to tell us some basic fire equipments that we need to have in our domestic homes, public spaces, even in the offices. Do or three. Yes, um, it is important that for um, every facility, we should get some fire extinguishers. They are very important. They would allow us within the, um, at the onset of fire to be able to contain it. And then apart from the fire extinguisher, we also have to get some alarm systems, such as the smoke alarms in our offices and even in our rooms, living areas, so that in the case of a fire, it will be able to alert us and then it will prompt us to evacuate the place. Mm -hmm. Most often than not, because people do not get alerted by these fires, they get asphyxiated by the smoke inhalation and then they collapse or they get un unconscious before the fire comes to burn them. So we should, as much as possible, get these smoke detected. They are not expensive. When you get to any fire station, they would help you to also get. And then we also get, we should also get what we call fire alternative water um, 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 storage in our various facilities, because it's a requirement. Once you come in for a fire certificate, mm. it is a requirement that you should get an alternative water. Um, best still, you are to, if possible, you can get a fire hydrant. Why not get it so that when we come and we get our water is exhausted, we can rely on some of these alternative water around your premises to be able to deal with the fire. And then also, uh, we should also incorporate, begin to incorporate fire resistant doors, fire resistant paintings, mm. fire resistant floors, and what have you, 
especially during the construction phase, so that they can easily contain the fires. Most often than not, when people are escaping fires, they forget to even close their doors, they forget to um, shut down their electrical systems and all that. So once we have the protection system in place to protect our electrical installations, it goes a long way to help us minimize the effect of fires. Now take your home ownership plan a notch higher, the Republic Bank way. Uh, as pre-setters mortgage business, we offer faster processing time, ultra low interest rate, and you can choose from a variety of long list of our partner developers. Whether it is home purchase, home equity, home completion, or home improvement, we have your back. Talk to our mortgage specialist today, Call or WhatsApp us on 05010 or 05 or 05 Kindly follow us at Republic Bank Ghana on all our social media platforms. I would want to also ask this one quickly, DO1. Um, tell us some of the bad habits that uh, we exhibit in our homes that contribute to fire outbreaks in our domestic homes. Um, the, um, the habit of uh, overloading um, and uh, also the habit of uh, not disposing um, combustibles. We have, we have kept them so much in the house that should the fire break out, it, it feeds the fire mm -hmm. and there's rapid spread. So if there are items in the houses or in your home that are not relevant, that you can't use them or you are not using them anymore. Dispose of them. And I also so, um, would advise that anytime you go fill your gas cylinder and you are bringing them home, please don't put them horizontal in the vehicle. It dances. There's something we call blivy, boiling liquids expansion, vaporization, explosion. All right? When the liquid, it's, it's, the gas is in the, the cylinder, is in the liquid state. But it's, it's, it's become gas when it's been expelled. Now, it has been filled 80% full, and that, that space left, 20%, it's expected that when it expands, all right, it's, it is, it is, it's occupied that space. But then people go fill them to the brim and put them horizontal in the vehicles. It dances, and you provoke it. And as you are provoking, it's expanding. When you take them to the house, they don't put it even there for it to, to, to settle. Then they, they start using them. You know, for you, for you, you, you'll be shocked to know that most of the cylinders we are using has outlived its age. You know, I, I ordinarily, an uh, a, a cylinder must, must, must be used for uh, one to six years, and it, you must change it. Mm -hmm. When it goes beyond that, then it's, it's becoming dangerous. And you, you go to the houses and you find out that most of the cylinders are corroded and perforated. And uh, recently, you, it, people are going around telling the public that fire cylinders have sent them to go take their corroding uh, okay. uh, 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 cylinders, then refurbish them. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I think I'll hold you there. Um, uh, it's now time to also call into the program to be part of the discussion. The call number on your screen, you can also call to be part of the discussion. Sorry for delaying the time for you to also join. Hello? Sorry, we lost that one there. Uh, please, you can call back again and also be a part of the discussion. So you, one, don't increase the fire load. Don't, um, don't uh, uh, over, over, overload your, your socket. Don't manage your fire cylinder very well. And have personal fire safety management in your home. When I'm going out from my house, um, I, there's a checklist I place at the back of my door and uh, ensure that I tick them one after the other gas cylinder off, elect electrical gadget off, television mm. off, fridge off, and make sure that all those things are... are now, that's your personal check. That's my personal but check. tell us, hold on, I'll come back to you on that discussion. Hello? Hello? Hello, sir. Please, your name and where are you calling from? From Asu South District. Okay, Hansen, go on. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask the fire officer that uh, the driver on our roof it's police people who are checking the driver's fire extinguisher. And sometimes the police people do place the fire extinguisher so for the uh, fire extinguisher to go with. So what are they doing to stop those things which is going on? And two, nowadays if somebody wants to build a house, they just go in for roadside missions. Whereby they don't know how to check 
fire, uh, uh, fire doors and what have you. So we will ask them to look, talk to the government to come up with some measures that will prevent those who have not been to school, but where they want to, uh, they want to take in a big, big contract. Thank okay, you. thank you very much, Hansen. So, uh, please respond quickly to yeah, us. Yeah, and we do to the of, uh, police checking, the, that is not their mandate. Never allow police officers to check your extinguishers. We have told you that um, um, the director of safety in the presence of uh, this year for Mausi in two, Sapong, Daniela, um, had a meeting with the DBLA, and uh, there is a program coming where fire service would collaborate with the police and the MTTB, all right, to start checking the extinguishers. And before it is the, the, we even issue the extinguishers out through the DVLA, we make sure that the, so the extinguishers are certified. Mm. So going forward, you won't see the police checking. The now you're on the checklist yeah. that you have to, yeah. before you leave your house, the, before, checklist, yeah, checklist. the safety checklist. So I, I take them and ensure that those things are, 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 are off before I leave my house. So that when I, 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 I'm gone, I'm sure that... You, you want uh, to mention a few of the checklists? That is, the, 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 that is the, the electrical gadgets, whether my socket is off, whether my television is off, <laughs> whether my air condition is off, my iron is off, the fan is off, all these things are listed, tall list. Whatever you, you have in the house, that is hazardous, fire hazards. That it poses a risk, fire risk to you. Make sure you put them off before you step out. Whether my gas cylinder is off, I'm not okay. sure I put the, the regulator off and uh, turn the valves off before I leave my house. Hello, Apia. Apia yeah, from Accra. Okay. Hello. Hello. Go on Hello. with your submission, Apia. Yeah, I want to contribute. Please go on. Yes. Um, there's a common practice among Ghanaians. You know, when we enter the kitchen, we want to use our gas. Many people try to first switch on the regulator you know, and then the, the, the court, the, the not on the banner, mm -hmm. before they even look for their matches. I think that practice must stop. Okay. And Thank then you the very second much. one also is about, the, the fire officer mentioned that when we buy the, the gas, we put the gas from the stations and we are taking them to our home. It should not lie horizontally, it should rather stand or something like that. Okay, thank you very much, Apia. Yeah. But I've seen that with the taxi drivers. Okay. The taxi drivers, most okay. of them put them horizontally. Okay, thank you very much, Apia. Thank you. Um, you want to respond to that. But let me ask this. This question just came in. It says, uh, can you ask about fire hydrants in the various community? Does government have plans to, you know, uh, have these uh, built in the communities? That's fire hydrants. Yes, it's a requirement um, for Ghana Water Company, wherever they have their lines to build fire hydrants for us. Mm -hmm. Actually, when you check your bill, there's 1% that you pay for firefighting. So if the fire hydrants are not being built, you must ask the right question and you must ask it, uh, to, um, ask it uh, well to the appropriate agency. Okay. We are collaborating with them. Now they are even replacing the screw down types, the old ones for us. And when you come to Accra, um, a lot of the town or the city centers, we have a lot of these old hydrants and change for us. And with time, we know that you are going to get us a lot more. Now, can, can one be prosecuted for not following these, uh, for not being fire compliant, fire safety compliant? Yes, one can be prosecuted. And I, I understand I'm, yourself, you I'm, arrested a lot of people. Yeah, I'm an example. And uh, it all has to do with the good leadership of the of uh, our chief officer and uh, the dynamic um, directions. Possibly to be jailed? Possibly to be jailed. I jailed. Uh, you uh, jailed? I, <laughs> <laughs> by the law, based on the law. I get it. I did. I did. And, uh, and uh, you see, by law, you have to do it. So okay. you don't do it. Um, you, inspections are conducted. Violations are, uh, uh, you withdraw our lesson to the infractions and ask you to correct them. Come for fire certificate. If you don't come, then we apply the law. Mm. And you see, very soon, my director in the person of Daniela Mausi Into has, okay. is forming a tax force. Okay. Is that an example? Let me yeah, see that. Yes, that is that. For the screen. So they will come to your house with these? With, they, they have a band on their, on their arms indicating that they have been, the, they have been uh, commissioned or integrated to ensure that they educate the masses 
on the need to acquire fire certificates. Now, talking about education, uh, fire service, do you visit the communities, say, um, residential associations to train them on how to respond to fire and the uh, safety equipments they need to have installed very in the much, offices? Very much. We so if there's a community or an association listening to us, what is the number for them to call and also tell them the programs you are about to roll out? All right. Um, if you want the services of the fire service to come to your premises to educate you, you can as well call us on 030-277-2446. 030-277-2446. And we'll be glad to assist you. Currently, and we have rolled out an intensified um, fire prevention and safety education nationwide, where some of our people are going to the slum community, some are going to our residential um, facilities. We have also market tax force who are into the market doing a lot of education to the masses and uh, very soon you'll be seeing our mobile fire tent also in our market where we have some officers around to be helping people with the fire emergency numbers because we've realized that um, people tend to blame us for responding to fire sleep because they don't call us mm. on our right numbers and all that. So we want to advise that people should make their structures disability friendly because today you may be leaving the house whole as a human being, nothing is wrong with you. Mm -hmm. but you may come back being in one state or the other. Therefore, if your structure is disability friendly, it helps you. So that our friends who are also visually or mobility impaired would be able to. Okay. The number still remains mm -hmm. 112 or 192. Call us early enough for a quick response. So a brief one? A brief one. I would say that... A fireman is an angel. I always want to liken our, our in thirty seconds our 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 profession to the priesthood. The priest works and deals with the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost fire, and we t t work with the natural fire. The priest okay. rescue people from uh, hell, uh, uh, from sin. sin to 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 heaven from from hell and we rescue people okay <laughs> so oh, yeah. when a fireman comes to you it's an angel it's an angel a very big thank you to do3 desmonaka deputy national public relations officer and michael atokosa deputy director fire safety we'll be coming away same time next week enjoy this week <laughs>